Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jenna Redfield and I am so excited for today's video. This is a video that I've been wanting to do for a while, but I knew it was going to be a lot. So I'm excited for us to jump into how to organize your house with ADHD. And we are going to be using Notion a little bit, but not as much. A lot of these are more practical tips, including storage ideas, but also just kind of general concepts around organization. Because I think, you know, I've asked in my Facebook group, I asked you guys what you struggle with the most when it comes to organization. And the two main things that came up was motivation and consistency. And that makes sense from an ADHD perspective. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is motivation. So one of the things that I think is really interesting about ADHD is that we actually have different motivations than the regular world. I saw this tweet on Twitter and I saved it because I thought it was so good. It's by Jesse Anderson. He's actually a TikToker, so you might as well follow him on TikTok. He's really got some good ADHD videos. But he says, neurotypicals are motivated by importance, rewards, and consequences, but ADHDers are motivated by interest, creativity and novelty, challenge, and urgency. Now, this really changed my perspective because it made so much sense to me. So I thought, well, why don't we apply that to organizing your house, right? Because if you're motivated, if, if, if you are told like, oh, you can't do this thing if you, you know, don't do it by a certain date, like that just doesn't motivate people. So look at these four things. First of all, interest. If you're not interested in cleaning, it's never ever going to happen. So really start to think about why you want to organize because if you're still like, eh, it's not a big deal, then it's never gonna happen. So somehow turning it into something that you're interested in doing is the first step. Creativity and novelty. I know this is a weird one, but like buying new things to organize with, that always encourages me. Um, for example, I bought a new uh, laundry basket and it made me want to do my laundry because I'm like, oh, I can use my new laundry basket. So it's like those kind of things can kind of encourage you, especially if they're cute and uh, also useful. Okay, challenge. Obviously, this is the one that we like to come up with things for ourselves that are challenging. So make it a challenge. Make it something that's hard to do somehow and try to figure it out. And then finally, urgency. Uh, maybe you have to take some pictures of something and it has to be organized by a certain time. Make it up. What doesn't matter, make something urgent for yourself. So when it comes to motivation, those are my tips. Um, you know, really it comes back down to what, what you want and uh, you have to motivate yourself to clean. I can't do that for you. Okay, so the second one that came up a lot was consistency. I think this is a thing that a lot of people struggle with is either putting it on their calendar or I think the bigger issue is not finishing what you start. So I think one of the things I've you know learned about is, you know, just try to start a project and finish it without being interrupted. Turn off your phone. Um, one of the things I know that happens to me is um, by doing something, it triggers another thing that I was either supposed to do or something else, but write it down be like, we'll do that after. So really just staying and finishing the thing that you start is really important and blocking out the time. I think that's the other thing that I struggle with is I don't ever have a set time for myself. So one of the things I'm gonna start doing is either daily or weekly having a set time, put it on my Google calendar, be like for an hour today, I'm going to do my laundry or whatever it is. You know, to me, laundry is the worst. It's the thing that I struggle with the most. Another thing you could do is use timers. I mean, there are so many different timer apps out there, you know, just setting timers and boundaries for the things that you have to do. I don't know if you've ever like set a timer for 10 minutes and tried to clean up your room. Like you can get so much done in 10 minutes if you're just focused and not distracted. That's something I've definitely used before. So I saw this other TikTok. I wanted to share it in full here because I thought it was so helpful. And she talked about having landing places. And what's interesting about this is I was like, this makes so much sense to me because you know, you need a place, you can't put it away right away, but you have at least a landing place or a tray for it to go on. And then eventually you put it away. So I'm gonna show you guys that TikTok right here. Don't put it down, put it away is great in theory, but it doesn't really work for me as an ADHD -er. So I'm gonna share with you what does. I like to have little landing spaces. So as you can see, this little tray is my landing space for all my jewelry. And I essentially just throw my jewelry off there because I'm usually taking it off before I get in the bath at night. And I'll take some time like once a week or once every couple weeks, whenever, I don't know. I'm not really like specific about it. And then I'll put everything away. Having little landing places for things has helped me a lot because honestly, I'm not gonna do this every single day where I 
pick up the specific item and put it right exactly where it belongs. I don't know, that just doesn't work for me. I'd rather, you know, throw it somewhere and then <laughs> all at one time, put everything away where it belongs. Also, for some reason, it's much more satisfying for me. So I've created little systems like this all throughout my house without even really realizing these little landing places for things that I can just throw them and then whenever I have the time and energy, I can put them all away. Gotta tackle this area next. What are your favorite ADHD organization hacks? And the last thing that you need is systems. So whether that's the storage containers themselves or using something like Notion to track and plan what you're cleaning or what you're organizing, you do need those. So we are gonna be talking about some of my favorite uh, organizational tools today, and I'm really excited to get into that. But before we do, I wanted to mention three different methodologies that I've learned about home organization, mostly from television. So there are three shows that I love watching. I'm actually a huge fan of home organizing. Um, I wouldn't say I'm great at it, but I love the concept of it. Um, and the three shows are Tidying Up with Marie Kondo over on Netflix, as well as the organization, I think it's called Organizing with the Home Edit over on Netflix. And then the last show that I recommend, a lot of people haven't seen it, it's called Hot Mess House with Cassandra. She is so interesting to me um, because she has these four different types of uh, organization. There's the butterfly, the bee, the ladybug, and the cricket. Um, I'll show you guys the graphic right here, but basically there's a quiz you can take on our website and I'll link it below. But basically there's four different types of people. Some like to actually see their stuff, right? And have it be contained. Some of them don't like to see it at all. I would say if you have ADHD, you don't want to hide everything away. Even if that's your, you know, main thing is you don't like to see the clutter. I always say, you know, make sure that you at least know it exists <laughs> or put it on your notion board um, like I do with my products page. So go through that quiz, see which one you are. Um, I forget which one I am, but I definitely like to see um, with clear containers what I own. Um, and so that one's very interesting to me. So those three different people have very different methodologies. Uh, Marie Kondo is all about sparking joy and, and really getting rid of things um, and then finding a system for them. With the home edit, they're more about just containing and figuring out um, you know, what containers can be used as well as labeling. And Cassandra is again more about finding your specific uh, layout that you work best with. So I recommend those three shows if you're like looking for something to do. Um, I, I've seen every episode of all of them and they are so inspirational. I've actually found some products from some of them, so that's been really helpful. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about six different things today. We're gonna be talking about, uh, first one is object permanence. Now, this is something that's really interesting is a lot of the times, a lot of ADHDers forget that they own things. I've seen this mentioned a bunch of times. So again, I've talked about this before on my channel, um, but clear containers are so important. And I'm gonna walk you through a few of my favorites and where to buy them. So the first one is actually this under the bed storage on wheels. I got this at Target and it stores a lot of my like excess uh, photo frames and magnets that I'm not using right now, just like a random stuff. And I love that they're on wheels. They're super easy and they're clear. I know exactly what's in them. They're super light and I love them. So I have two of them. I might be getting a third. You could probably fit about four under your bed. Depends on how big your bed is. Like you could probably fit even more than that. Um, but they're super helpful because they're not in the way. You could also even store like out of season clothing. Another one of my favorites is this, which is sitting in front of me. So this is from Amazon and I store all of my like hard drives and computer stuff and you can see it's a little bit bright. Um, let me turn this down. So you can see that I labeled it computer. Now this is actually the next thing that I'm talking about, which is labels, but I just wanted to mention this. This is about $15 on Amazon. I have two of these. I also store other iPhone things in that. The other things that I've mentioned before is these drawers from the container store. I love them because they're clear and you just pull them out. I have a couple under my uh, sink as well as a few other places. Some other of my favorite storage, these are from the container store and you can see I also label this, it says hair. I've got some hair stuff in it. Um, they have white and then they also have clear buckets. I really like these because they're easy to know exactly what's in them, but they're still contained. Again, clear storage for the win always. I think it's really helpful for you to see. I also have some really large things that I have extra storage containers with that are clear, and I just really like clear containers for storage. So when it comes to labels, uh, 
the home edit actually has some really cool labels at the container store, but I actually designed these myself using the Cricut machine. Now, if you do not have a Cricut machine and you're not planning on using it, don't buy it. It's more stuff to just have in your house. Since I already had a Cricut machine, I was able to create this label, put it on black vinyl as a sticker, and I think I use the playlist script font um, to make these labels, and I can customize them however I want. So that was a pretty cool process, being able to make labels for different things that I have. I also have like a little label maker this one's like $25 at Target labels you can get a bunch of them and so I have labeled a lot of things in the past including I have a ton of these binders and they have labels on the side this one says food um, but I have a lot of those for business I'm trying to get away from having a lot of paper in my life uh, but I do still have quite a few in like white three wing binders. I have like a ton of them. Okay. So number three, the thing I really want to talk about is laundry. Um, when you go through Marie Kondo's book, the first thing that she wants you to organize is clothing. And so one of the things that I found is really helpful is I have gotten the folding thing. I saw this on the big bang theory. Sheldon was using it. It you can fold anything from your t-shirts to your pants. Now I won't, I don't do this every time I do the laundry, but if my clothes are starting to overwhelm my drawers, I tend to pull this out and do it for 20 minutes and, and fold a bunch of my clothes. Uh, I'm not great at doing the Marie Kondo method, so this is just easier to just do that. This thing costs like $10 on Amazon. In addition to that, I mentioned this Walmart carrier. Let me go grab it. So one of my issues with my laundry was the container that I was carrying was so awkward and heavy. Um, I bought this. It is like a spring loaded laundry basket. This was literally $3 at Walmart. I saw it on TikTok and I went, I have to have that. It can, you know, fold up so it doesn't take up any space. And for me, having to carry laundry up the stairs was a lot of work and it made me never want to do my laundry. So making sure that you have products that help you is really important. Okay, so the fourth thing to talk about is do you have a system, um, whether that's a chore chart or something that allows you to actually organize yourself? I use Notion, having some sort of a uh, list of chores, dates that it's going to happen. Uh, sometimes it doesn't always work out. Obviously, you know, I have to be very much uh, knowing what's going to work and what's not going to work. But, you know, just listing all the things that you need to do on a regular basis. Um, you know, whether that's going through your papers or whatever you're doing, there's so many different things that you can do. And I just think having some sort of system, I have my daily life tracker, um, template for notion below, but there's also some other ones I'll also link that have to do more with like home organization. My products one is really good. I have taken a photo of everything I own so that I know exactly where it is um, and what I own so I can visually see it on the computer. Number five, this is a big one uh, for ADHDers is can you get rid of things that you can digitize? And this is really true for me. Um, for example, I still have all of my papers from high school, middle school, college. I literally have all of that in these huge file folders and I need to go through them and be like, what do I actually wanna save? A lot of these are like notes from science class. Can I scan them and put them in the computer and just throw them away. I mean, I've gone through it, I think three times already. And every time I pare it down more and more, but I still have a ton of them left. So, um, another thing that I struggle with is I keep a lot of my childhood toys. So I, like, I want to give it to my children eventually one day, but right now they're taking up a lot of space. So it's like, should I take a photo of it? So I remember it. I actually have an entire Pinterest board as well as a notion board of just my favorite childhood toys. Cause I'm so nostalgic for my childhood, um, that I'm like, should I just have the photo and, and remember it that way? Or do I actually need to keep the toys? I don't know. That's just something I need to go through. Also books. I've been trying to think about books. I don't try to buy books or even like DVDs anymore. Um, I don't know about you, but I ended up consolidating all my DVDs to this like one thing because I was like, I have all these DVDs. First of all, DVDs are not like <laughs> going to be here forever. Um, some of these movies are now available on streaming. Do I keep them? Uh, some of the movies are not available on streaming. Do I keep them? You know, paring down to, you know, sh if, if I love a book enough, should I just buy it on Kindle so that I still have it, but I don't have it physically? You know, so start to think, can you digitize some of these things? Uh, children's art projects, can you take a picture of it and then scan into your phone so you remember it? Like, do you need it physically or do you need it digitally? So that's something to also think about. And number six, this was a question I got is, what if I have a really small 
small space. I think the biggest thing is finding the right systems and tools for your space that are multi-purpose. So if you have something that can convert, maybe like a table or something, you can put it away. If there's something that you can store multiple things in, um, I think just looking, Ikea is my go-to for a lot of my uh, furniture. Almost everything in this office is from Ikea, my desk, this uh, thing. I love this thing back here. This is a uh, uh, an amazing system and they have them in multiple sizes. I also have one to store all of my fitness equipment. Um, I like having the open concept. Um, you know, I've, I've learned what works and doesn't work with me when it comes to storage. You could do something like down here. I actually have a white thing with stuff that I don't need, you know, seen. But what I've learned is that I do work better with clear things. But if there's something that like that stuff in there is just like cables, don't really need to see that. Um, really figure out what works for you. Um, anyways, I hope that this video was helpful if you're trying to organize your life with ADHD. I'm not an expert, but I hope that some of these were helpful. I will leave all the links below to these products as well as make sure to sign up for my uh, 30 days of Notion that's happening in our Facebook group, ADHD and Notion. Uh, that's happening through the month of February as well as make sure to sign up for our free resources, both ADHD and Notion, all that stuff will be in there as well. So hope you guys have a great day and talk to you soon. Bye.